Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create the Hearts and Roses artwork. This is a very easy, beginner-friendly project, and I will show you some ways to customize it to your own preferences. Well, let's get started. I begin by arranging some rose patterns onto my board. The patterns are ones I cut out from a page of roses that I have available on my website, and I will put a link to the pattern in the video description. Once I have an arrangement I like, I trace around the edges of the cutout. This was done so that they could be replaced in their exact same position. Afterwards, I removed the patterns from the board and coated the back of them with a dark graphite pencil. Then I returned my first rows to the board and traced over the design. I always check to make sure the trace lines are easily visible. If I can't see the lines, then I remove the pattern and add more graphite, and then I try again. I like to use a mechanical pencil for tracing. The reason is that it keeps a sharp point and it never needs sharpening. As I trace it, I lightly draw little X's on the rose petals I've traced. Some people prefer to use a colored ink pen to make it easy to see where they've traced. Either method will work. Now use a writer pen tip and burn over the trace lines. The lines can be as dark as you want. I eventually reburned over all of my lines to darken them up, but I didn't do that until after the graphite was erased. Always keep the pattern nearby, just in case you're unsure about a trace line, or maybe there's a missing spot. Then it's helpful to check with the pattern and examine the problem area. Once the trace lines are burned in, then repeat the entire process with the next rows. Coat the back of the pattern with graphite, trace over the lines to transfer it onto the board, and then burn in the trace lines. Continue this until all of the roses on your artwork have been traced and the lines burned in. Rub over the board with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. I decided to pencil in some stems on my roses. Once they were drawn, I burned over the pencil lines with a writer pen tip. Afterwards, I erased over the area to remove any residual graphite. I fixed a mistake by gently scraping over the line with the sharp tip of a knife. I did reburn over all of the pattern lines to darken them up. Quite truthfully, this was not necessary. Switch to a shader pen tip of your choice and burn the stems and rose leaves to a dark color. The color does not need to be uniform. If desired, you can burn the leaves to a color that is not as dark as the stem, or you could leave the edges of the leaves a touch lighter in color. The only reason to do either one of those things is just to help the leaves stand out from the stem. And if you don't want to, it really doesn't matter. Make sure to rotate the board as needed so that the front edge of the pin tip is able to follow the edges of the object. This is what I call optimal position, and it will help keep your edges crisp and clean. I am using uniform strokes as my burn method. Since we are not creating a specific texture, you can use any burn stroke you like. Our only goal right now is to burn the stems and leaves to a dark color. After you finish the stems and leaves on your first rose, then burn in the stems and leaves on all of the remaining roses. I am not going to show that because there isn't anything more to be learned from it. Make sure the heat on your burner is set to get a dark tan to very light brown burn result. We want the rose petals to be much lighter in color than the leaves and stems. I am burning bands of color or streaks of color on the petals. I leave little gaps between the streaks. Also, I vary the color of the streaks. The streaks or bands are burned following the contour of each individual rose petal. 
any place where two petals touch, I burn the petal in the back a touch darker along the areas where they touch. I do this to help each petal stand out a little more. Some of the petals have little areas along the end that curl. An arrow is pointing to one. I just lightly burn over them to give them a little color. Repeat this process for each rose on your artwork. Burn each petal on the rose individually. Start each burn stroke on either the inner or outer edge of the petal. Then pull the pen tip towards the opposite edge of the petal, following the contours of the rose petal as you burn. I am using a Burn Master handset equipped with a spear tip shader. I'm using a spear tip shader because the point allows me to get into the small areas on the rose petals. You do not have to use the same pen tip that I am using, just like you don't have to burn your rose the same way that I am doing. I am explaining what I am doing and why, and you can decide if you want to do the same. As I mentioned before, any place where two petals touch, I burn one of them darker at the place of contact. How far you extend the dark color is up to you. With the larger roses that have lots of petals, I tend to leave the outer edge of each petal a little bit lighter in color. Also, I tend to burn the base of the petal a touch darker. The combination of a darker base and a pale edge helps differentiate each petal on the rose. With this particular artwork, the other thing that helps differentiate each individual petal are the bands or streaks of color on them. Speaking of the color streaks, make sure to vary their color, width, and placement. Don't burn your bands of colors at a set distance from each other. If you look closely at the top petal on my rose, it looks awful. The burn marks are the same width, and they are evenly spaced throughout the petal. Now look at the bottom petal. This petal has a lot more variety, and it looks a lot better. As you can see, I rotated the board. This allows me to start the burn strokes on the base of the petal where I want the color to be darker. Burn strokes generally start darker than they end, so starting the burn strokes at the base of the petal darkens it, and that is something that I want. Also, Burning in this direction allows me to pull the pin tip down towards myself. You will get more consistent burn results when you can pull the pin tip down towards yourself versus pushing it up and away from yourself. As I burn streaks of color on the rose petals, I do not try to align the burn marks. What I mean by that is if I'm burning along both edges of the petal, so I burned along the top, and then I did separate burn marks along the bottom. I do not try to make those separate burn marks align with each other. I just figure it adds more variety. Plus, I doubt anyone's going to notice. With the smaller rose petals, I didn't burn many bands of color. With the exception of the base where the color's darker, they are almost uniform in color. Now you need to burn in any other roses that are on your artwork. I am not going to show the last rose on my artwork because there isn't anything new to learn. Here is how my artwork looks so far. Use a pencil and lightly draw some hearts onto the background. Vary the size and placement of the hearts. If desired, you can use a stencil to get perfectly shaped hearts. How many hearts you put on the background is completely up to you. After you have drawn all of the hearts you desire on your background, then use a shader pen tip and start burning in the background. I am using circular motion as my burn method for this. The reason is that I do not want any crisp lines forming around or on the hearts. I want the hearts to be vague and slightly out of focus. Now keep in mind, I am explaining what I did with my artwork. That does not mean you have to do the same thing. 
If you watch my customization chapter, I provide numerous ideas to alter the artwork to your own preferences. Some of the ideas involve adding color, and some of the ideas do not. As I said before, I am using circular motion as my burn method. Also, I am using Colwood's S shader as I work. I chose this particular shader because of its curved shape. This type of shape makes it easier to keep lines from forming, especially compared to the spear shader that I was using before. That said, use the shader you feel most comfortable with. As I work on the background, I am currently avoiding the hearts that I drew in. I burn around their shapes, making sure that the edges of the hearts are soft. Mostly I am using circular motion as my burn method, but occasionally I use some uniform strokes. Generally, my use of uniform strokes is along the edges of a heart. When I do this, I burn on, and sometimes a bit over the line, to ensure that a crisp edge does not form on the heart. Once the background around a heart is done, then I erase the pencil marks and continue working. The hearts in my artwork get the same treatment as the background, so I am mostly using circular motion as my burn method on them. Both the background behind the hearts and the hearts themselves have a fair amount of tonal variety. The variety comes from both the circular motion burn stroke I'm using and reburning. I purposely reburn over small areas to darken it up. In some areas, I leave quite a bit lighter. I am not going to show the rest of the background being burned in. I think you get the gist of what I've done, and can replicate that in your own artwork. Here is how my artwork currently looks. As you can see, the roses don't stand out very well. One easy way to fix that is to burn a thick, dark band of color around the outside of the rose. You could take this one step further and extend the color. Another option is to leave the background much paler in color. From there, you can add a few hearts with clearly defined crisp edges on them. Another option is to apply a little color to the background. Then you can darken up some of the hearts that you want to emphasize. You can create a high contrast by using a vividly colored background. You can also do the opposite. Apply color just to the roses. And what color you give them is really up to you. One other option is to apply color to the background and the roses. I highly recommend taking a photo of your artwork and printing it off and applying color to the printout to work out the color scheme that you like. I started out by applying Prismacolor number 1026, which is grade lavender, over the entire background. Be aware that darker burn marks resist the color pencil. Also, the smoother the board is, the more it resists the color pencil. I wasn't after a dark layer of colored pencil, so what little adhered to the board worked fine for me. Here's how the artwork looked before and after I applied colored pencil to the background. Next, I used Prismacolor number P956, which is lilac, and colored over a few of the hearts to help them stand out a little more. And that concluded the color I added to the background. With the roses, I first applied a light layer of Prismacolor P926 Carmen Red. I applied the color over the entire rose petals. Now this is a very light layer of color because I want the underlying pyography to show through. Also, I did not worry about coloring the petals individually. My only goal was just to add some light color to the roses not further contour them. Lastly, I added a very light layer of Prismacolor P994 Process Red over all of the rose petals. Process Red has been applied to the top and left rows. 
this creates a brighter, more vibrant color. And here is how my artwork turned out. Since I added color to the board, I do not wood burn my name in. Instead, I use a fine tip permanent marker to sign my name. If you applied color to your artwork, make sure to use a spray on finish. I used a clear matte polyacrylic for my artwork. Next, I applied double sided tape along the edges of my board. I'm using a leftover piece of alder from one of Todd's woodworking projects. Next, I applied ribbon over the edges of the board. I put the seam on the bottom of the board. Later, I pulled up the ribbon and moved the seam to the side where the handle would go, and the handle would hide that seam. After the ribbon was in place, I cut another piece of ribbon to make the handle. Then I put a piece of double-sided tape where the ribbon handle would be attached to. I also put a piece of tape on the handle where I would fold it over. The fold ensures that the ribbon doesn't fray out or rip free from the tack. I'm using upholstery tacks or upholstery nails that I got at a home improvement store. I align the tack with a pre-drilled hole on the side of the board. Then I lightly tap it into place with a hammer. This project is done and ready for hanging or giving as a gift. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you liked this project. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.